In the last video, I explored the idea of sand batteries and how they are a innovation that is a safe, cheap, sustainable, and really kind of low tech solution that can store quite a lot of energy from all different types of energy sources as heat. And in that way, on top of being sustainable, it's also kind of universal. And also in that video, I tried making my own using some simple, cheap household materials. The sand battery I made in that video perhaps wasn't really working so well. In fact, I don't think it really worked much at all. And I wanted to try doing something about that. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at how insulation can affect the performance of a small scale sand battery. And that's going to be the topic of this episode of doing it ourselves. Now there are many different types of insulation out there and many different applications for them, but the basic principle is if you want to keep heat inside an object, whether it's a water bottle or something as large as a home, you need to insulate it. The main reason why there's been such a push in recent years for insulating homes and other buildings is for the simple reason that it means that more heat gets trapped inside and that means less heating needs to be applied to the area in order to keep it warm. A similar principle can be applied to something like a heat battery, whether it's water or a sand battery or any other. A hot water bottle is effectively a heat battery because it stores heat energy in the water. A sand battery similarly stores energy as heat as well. However, in order for these materials to store heat for extended periods of time, they need to be insulated. So I've done a couple of tests. Firstly, I've tested once again my sand battery completely unaltered without any insulation on it. The only change I've made is I've ditched the copper elements that I was using previously and I've switched to nichrome because nichrome has a higher resistance, which means that with my current limited power supply, it can push more watts into the sand and heat it up a lot quicker. So for each run, I heated the sand for 10 minutes after putting the element into the sand, connecting the electrodes and turning on my power supply, and I waited until the time was up. After completing the test, I removed the heating element from the sand and started another timer to see how long it would take to cool down. And after about half an hour, the uninsulated sand battery cooled to a temperature of around 36 degrees, down from its peak, which was around about 200 or so. Next, it was time to start adding some insulation. So what I have here is some ceramic wool insulation. This is probably mostly just silica wool. And what I did to my sand battery was I cut some of this a little bit thinner and I wrapped it around the outer rim of my sand battery. And then to insulate the bottom, the remainder cutting from that piece of wool, I curled up and put at the bottom in order to insulate it from my bench. And then I ran the same tests again. 10 minutes heating and around 40 minutes cool down time. And the insulation enveloping the sand battery seemed to improve things a little. Even after a longer cool down time of 40 minutes instead of 30, the sand battery had only cooled to around 40 degrees as opposed to around 36, 37. So we was moving slowly in the right direction, but there was still a part of the sand battery that wasn't insulated. We've accounted for the outer rim of the sand battery. We've accounted for the bottom, but something we haven't done is taken into account the fact that the air, the atmosphere around the sand battery also acts as a heat sink and will rapidly siphon heat away from the device. It's part of why air cooling in things like 
computers is so effective. So I did another incredibly simple thing. I decided to just put another chunk of insulation, just slap it on top of the sand battery. And I performed the same test again. With the lid off, I heated up again the sand battery for 10 minutes and I once again removed the element and after that I put the lid on and waited for the same amount of time as the previous run and when I came back I found that this small change improved things significantly. Instead of 30s or 40s we were now getting into the 60s after 40 minutes of cooldown time but I wanted to perform one last test. You see, we've changed basically everything else except for the amount of time we heat the thing up. And so something I wanted to try is see if heating the sand battery for a longer period of time would have any impact on the temperature and how long it takes for the thing to cool down. And so that's what I did. So instead of 10 minutes heating time with the exact same insulation configuration, I instead tried to heat the sand battery for 25 minutes and then tried cooling it for an hour. And after the hour was up near enough and I recorded the temperature once more, we were getting into the high 70s after one hour of cooling. Now, obviously, we're not quite there yet. The sand battery in its current state is still losing heat way too rapidly to be a practical storage solution. But we're kind of on the money with the idea that insulating the sand battery will mitigate heat loss. And I have a couple of ideas on how I could improve it further. You see, ceramic wool and similar things are what's called bulk insulation. They don't reflect any heat away or anything like that. All they do is slow down the loss of heat. The other type of insulation is called reflective insulation. And a common household material that's good at reflecting heat is aluminium foil. So in the future, I will explore whether a combination of bulk and reflective insulations will minimize heat losses even further. But in this video, I think I've demonstrated fairly well how insulation is absolutely crucial for sand batteries or any other type of heat battery. And I want to explore this further in future research projects and content. For now though, that's all from me. Next time, we'll be going back to my algae project where we'll be taking a look at methods of harvesting algae from its culture medium. But for now, take care, see you in the next one, stay safe, stay positive, and bye for now.